to the comic shop I'll let you read about Cyclops I'll have you spending all you got Trump Space Force is looking hot Damn Leo Alright, we're still rocking and rolling here on Testosterone Overload, another totally awesome comic book review for all you beautiful people out there in internet land. And today I got something real special. Uh, you know, typically on here, you find me talking about a lot of image comic books. Uh, occasionally I cover a Marvel comic book. Uh, you know, I've done a couple Valiant comic books. But today I want to show you how popular comic books were in the 1990s that pretty much anyone and everyone was making comic books. And that's where Ultraverse came from. This is Solitaire in the black poly bag from Malibu Comics. Solitaire, you know, side note, Malibu Comics uh, did do uh, some of the publishing for Image Comics. They worked with them to get those comic books out on time. This is still in the poly bag. It has been in a poly bag for 25 years, and we're going to open it together right now, and then I'm going to go read it, and we're going to find out if it's any good. So let's just tear right into the son of a gun. Boom. We got a card. Let's look at the card first. Oh. Oh, look at that. A playing card. I actually really dig that. That is so much cooler than just, you know, another collectible card. Everybody was giving out collectible cards back then. Um, but this card is actually from a deck of playing cards, which is pretty cool. I don't know if Malibu released a whole deck of playing cards, but this is... Uh, Man, this might be the coolest thing I've seen in a comic book, actually. You know, I was, I was expecting to open this up and find just another collectible trading card. Uh, maybe a chromium card. They do that sometimes, too. Not a playing card. That was the last thing I expected. But anyways, this is a Solitaire from the Ultraverse number one. I don't know if this is good. Let's just, let's just open it up right away. Okay, well, this is, this is already kind of interesting. This is kind of pulling me in. Here we see uh, the T-1000 after Arnold has blown him to hell and covered him in, I don't know, lick, uh, lava and all that uh, molten lava. So anyways, yeah, Terminator 2 for the Super Nintendo, the Genesis, even the Game Gear. Anyways, I'm going to go read this real quick, but I'll be back, uh, you know, in two shakes of a lamb's tail, and we'll talk about if it was good or not. talking about Ultraverse Solitaire today. So check it out. I opened this comic in the awesome black bag. It came with a very unique trading card, diamonds. And let me just pop it open here, guys. This was actually pretty good. Um, so you got these two brothers here. We're chasing down this dame for a guy called the King, King Pleasure if we're going to be specific. This is from November of 1993, by the way. It's written by Gerard Jones, and it is drawn by Jeff Johnson, and I like Jeff Johnson's work. It is uh, very nice. Uh, I really like the color by Food Hammer, which is a very unique name, Food Hammer. As you can see there, Food Hammer. So the pleasure principle, basically. This is solitary. He comes out. He knocks the crap out of these guys. Um, there's not a lot of over overlapping here, nothing breaking through the panels, which disappoints me, but, you know, the art is enjoyable. Um, you know, it's, it's simple, but, but effective. So basically he's beating the crap out of these guys. He wants to know where the king is. And all of a sudden this old school style, uh, car from Gotham pulls up. No one finds the king. The king finds you. Tuk, 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 tuk. 
blows, th kills this guy just dead, and you know tries to shoot him. Boom! He gets taken out. Kablam! And then the chick he saved is like, "Oh no, I gotta help you." And he's like, "I'm hard to hurt. It's fine. Don't worry about it, baby." Because you know, does he have a mutant healing factor? I don't know. He's got a giant, giant hole blowing right in his heart, but he's alive. Tell me everything about the king. So then we cut to the king's pleasure palace. And he's in here, he's got these slaves. He has male slaves and female slaves. And they're all young. Um, I'm not gonna say that the dude is a pedophile, but he definitely likes uh, younger girls. And you know, the motto of King Pleasure, if it feels good, do it. Arrow the Acrobat, man. That was a good one back in the day. You guys know what I'm talking about with that? Oh, jeez, RoboCop 3. Thanks, Frank Miller. Anyway, so Solitaire, you know, throws the dame on his bike uh, and follows, this is, a, this is a neat little panel here. See, like it's this and it's bigger here. And it's actually the gas that's leaking from where he shot the car. He put a bullet in there and the car eventually ran out of gas and this is how he was able to follow him. And these guys are drug addicts. They've been doing the quick rush stimulants called poppers are mixed in with the ammo. He knows that if he gives reckless foes enough time, they'll be his. Hey, wait, he drops her off and all of a sudden these three chicks appear. Uh, quiet, come with us. We have a place for you to stay. And she's like, but I want to know who he was. And they're like, believe me, we all do. And so what I want to say before we go any further is what this comic book kind of reminds me of is there is a, there is a, uh, a series of short stories by Stephen King called Nightmares and Dreamscapes. And one of those stories is called Popsy. And it is about a guy who abducts a child from a mall. And he's going to sell that child to a pedophile ring. And it turns out that the child is a vampire and his Popsy, his grandfather, is following the van and lands on top of the windowless van. Uh, as it's going to the pedophile's ranch or whatever. And I get this, I, I get a vibe of that from this because it talks about, you know, it's obviously like you got King Pleasure here and he's abducting uh, younger women and younger boys that he likes to, you know, have his way with, made them sex slaves essentially. And they talk about, you know, how she was abducted and uh, taken in a windowless van. And I don't know why, but it just reminded me of that Popsy uh Short story by Stephen King. It's a great short story, too. And it's really great. So anyway, so at the edge of Hollywood, the dreams are boarded up. So this is an old theater called Dreamland, but one man found the keys to enter. And so Solitaire rides in here, and he's got, like, set up in this old abandoned theater, which I think this is pretty cool. Um, the only other comic book I can actually think of that is set in Hollywood is the uh, the 90s Wonder Man from Marvel. But this is actually much more interesting because it's dealing with uh, more difficult subjects like King Pleasure. So uh, his fingers strike as decisively as his fists and a network of hidden hackers watches his orders take shape. They match the serial number of the car against factory records, track it to an auto broker, then a purchaser, a huge law firm with no insurance or registration for the car. So basically Solitaire like puts all this into the internet, even though the internet didn't exist then really in this sense, in the conventional sense we know it today. And all these hackers basically like figure out where the car came from. And he gets all of the information he needs. It's Sky. There are guys hunting for you. They wanted that girl you helped tonight and hide the girl. Have Jumpy sell these guys the fact that I'm at that meat locker on Central. Oh, y yes, sir. So, you know, he's got these women helping him. This kind of reminds me of Sin City also, where it's like, you know, this chick is, you know, being helped by the, by the prostitutes. Even though I don't think these are prostitutes. These are just other women who Solitaire saved maybe, I'm not, I'm not sure yet, but I'm tracking. Now it's all, now it's all timing. Hey, hey, you, you want Solitaire? Buy me a fix, I'll tell you. So, you know, this kid is a drug addict and, you know, if these two heavies buy him a, some dope, he's willing to rat out Solitaire. It's patience and a little gambling. We know where he is, send the rest. And knowing when to make your move. Oh, he's holding aces, baby. 
Bam, he's holding aces, baby, aces. Now I get why the playing card came into effect there. So these guys break in, Choom gang! We got Barack Obama, Choom! You know, they're coming to see, they're looking for uh, evidence that Donald Trump colluded with the Russians. That's why they give you this, this symbol to let you know that Barack Obama and his Choom gang are, are on the case. So basically, you know, this is a slaughterhouse. They're there because they think Solitaire's there. Turns out Solitaire is there. He drops down, kicks some ass. This is interesting. Don't hurt me, please. Yes, and that's it. Let me savor the salty taste of fear. Let me, she cries. Damn it, I can't get into it. So it's just like, and he throws his glove away. It's like, what? It's going, eeny, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I wonder where his glove will go. The king is unhappy. We're cooking more feel goods. That's like, that's drugs, right? They're cooking more drugs in here that they obviously sell on the streets. What good will that do me? I want solitaire. Why don't they radio it in? Oh, why don't they radio in? I don't ask much. I'm a simple man. I ask only to enjoy my pleasures. If it's wet, I drink it. If it's dry, I snort it. And if it's young, the van's coming, sir. Now you're getting it? You're seeing what this dirt bag's all about, right? Drugs and sex, drugs and sex, dealing with tough issues in the Ultraverse here. And so, you know, um, anyway, my boy Solitaire is just going to continually kick butt. He's going to absolutely invade the pleasure palace of the king. Oh, Lethal Enforcers. Remember that one? You could get it for the Sega CD. See, this is... Sega CD. Sega CD was like, uh, it wasn't really a separate console. It was, you would have your Sega Genesis, right? You have your Sega Genesis here. And then you'd buy the Sega CD console and it would like hook into your Sega Genesis, if I recall. And then you would be able to put the CD in there and play the Sega CD. Thought you guys might like to know. So, you know, basically, the king here, he's got this hidden gun, and he's willing to make any deal. I, I know exactly what you need. It'll, it'll take care of you for the rest of your life, which won't be very long. Baraka, 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 Baraka Obama. And, you know, he gets him. He plugs him a couple times, but it doesn't matter. Like, you can't stop him. This fire gets set. There's the, he tips the bong over. That's a party foul right there, guys. That's, you can't tip the bong over. That's a party foul. Um, and it looks like they were freebasing here. This looks like something used to freebase. Um, we have a needle, I guess, to shoot up. We have some red liquid that they're Heisenberging. Um, some pills there. We got some poppers. And I got like these, you know, these young, these young kids here. Not, they're not that young. She's like, gotta be 25. Like the boy, I don't know. Um, but they're, you know, it starts this fire anyways. And the king, he, he flees like a coward. But, but solitaire, he's cool. Hold still. Boom. Takes a shot. Oh, God. He shot the chain off. What a stud. By now, the king could be gone, vanishing into the canyons around this house. But Solitaire knows this man's kind. To run naked and on foot into the rugged California hills, away from a phone, away from his money, not king pleasure. I liked, I really like this because I actually feel like this is set in, in L.A. If you've ever been in that area, if you're familiar with it, this, this seems like it's actually written by someone that lives there to refer to the canyons. And, you know, would a person actually go into the canyons on foot, especially a guy like King Pleasure? Probably not. King, so basically, King's got a key. It's not the jag, not the rolls. It's got to fit this one. It's too much clutter in your life, King. Oh, God. Let me simplify things for you. So they get in this fight. King takes the key and stabs him in the eye, which is totally badass. King Pleasure will never suffer. And then there's an explosion and Flaming Wood shoots right through his chest, which is just a great way for him to bite it. The villain didn't, or the, the, the hero did not have anything to do with the death. It's a total deus ex machina, and which means uh, when God enters the machine, that's technically in, in most situations, that's a sign of bad story writing. Um, and let me explain where the deus ex machina comes from. Um, in, in the old days, like in, in Greek plays, uh, 
a writer who was not particularly good and could not figure out how to resolve the story on his own with, with the characters resolving the story, what they would do is they would have an actor playing one of the gods would be lowered by a rope from above the stage. So God enters the machine. It is the creator literally entering the thing he created to resolve the situation, which you could say this is a deus ex machina, a chunk of wood from this explosion shoots through his back and out his chest. That is a deus ex machina, but this is actually good. Sometimes it works. Um, it works if it makes sense. It doesn't work if it doesn't make sense. Uh, then it's uh, just, you know, a hack writer who couldn't resolve a situation on his own by developing a, a unique plot. And there, I could go on forever about the writing. Anyway, the writing in this is solid. Who are you? What are you? I, I shot you. I killed you. Solitaire takes his mask off. Nicholas? Anton Lone's son? I've done business with your father. Your father's been here using my pleasure dome. If he learns what you've done to me, maybe you can tell him soon when you meet him in hell. Ooh, now we have some interesting familial relationship here. There's a story between Nicholas and his father, Anton. And this is a great shot. This is a great shot. I really like the colors. I really like Food Hammer's colors. It's, it's, this is simple, but it's not as plain as Valiant. You know what I mean? Like this is, I don't want to say it's simple. I want to say it's minimalist, um, which is great. You know, you don't need a background in here. Uh, it's not important. It's not necessary for us to see anything in the background. We're focused solely on these characters. This is good. This is good directing. Uh, uh, but who is he? Is he blah, blah, blah? He feels the itch of the final knittings of his flesh. And he remembers this road, this curve, the accident that was no accident. He remembers the father who wouldn't let him die. And he vows that this fight has only just begun. So here's the deal, is that the dude has nanotechnology in his in little nanobots that stitch together his wounds. And so that's interesting. And I really love this page here too. These two pages might be my favorite in this comic book because they're simple, but they really, really tell the story extremely well. Uh, very well drawn. Mm, I really like it. So, boom, we're done. We're done. That's it. He vows that this fight has only just begun. 25 great pages of a comic book right here. Thanks to Gerard Jones and Jeff Johnson. Barb Kalberg, you did great inking this too. Really great ink job. Look at that. Look at this. Look at this page. This is beautiful. I mean, everybody did a great job on this. And this is from uh, Malibu Comics. Malibu probably is most famous for Prime. This confuses me because I think Marvel does Exiles now, but it's a different Exiles, obviously. Um, again, you know, you guys know that I love to read the stuff in the back that's by the creators, the Ultra Files, if you will, um, and Unsung Heroes. This is, this is pretty cool. At the center of the creative team that produces each Ultraverse comic book is the editor. Working as a partner with the writers, artists, letterers, and colorists, the editor is the guy who helps plot each book, adjusts dialogue, ensures continuity, develops promotions with the marketing department, and lastly, works with our frighteningly efficient manufacturing department run by the brutal Eric Senna, a man who put the term dead in deadline. You have to be a little bit nuts to take the job. Luckily for me, I've got three of the most insane people you'll ever meet working on the Ultraverse. I've watched them stay through weekends, work through the night, and meet impossible deadlines through sheer force of will. Not a pretty sight, I assure you. So special thanks to senior editor Dan Danko. If you like the Skybox Ultraverse card set, think Dan. Editor Roland Mann, prototype The Strangers and the Nightman. And quality control guru and line editor Hank Canales. His editing too many books to list here. He's editing too many books to list here. Take a bow. I love each and every one of you. Now get back to work. And I'm not sure who's writing this. I'm going to guess Chris Olm, the editor-in-chief, is writing this. And then this is another little fun part. This is Diane. Diane Botta. She's a fan liaison. Ralph Dula from New Cumberland, Pennsylvania asks, Diane, 
Do you go through every single one of these letters and send replies by yourself? And should we address it to you or the name of the letters page? Well, Ralph, I have received a great number of letters with similar inquiries. My official title is Fan Liaison. Malibu cares a great deal about you, the fans, and has chosen me to take care of all of your comments and questions concerning the Ultraverse. Yes, I am actually happy to read and reply to all of the feedback I receive. I also write the responses for all Ultraverse letters pages. So all mail should be directed to me. I'd like to thank the thousands of fans who have written in already. I am here for you, and I have thoroughly enjoyed each letter. Thanks, and continue to keep Papermate in business. And there's Diane. She is smoking hot. I want to remind you, this is in the days of before Photoshop could make every girl smoking hot. This is not taken from above. You know, it's not like one of those trick selfies to make her look skinny. This is a legitimately hot chick working in comic books. There are actually attractive women who like comic books. No matter what Comics Gate says. No, I'm just ribbing. So anyways, the Ultraverse by Malibu. Uh, tried to make a run of it, you know? Um, I don't think they had quite the characters that they needed uh, as far as, you know, competing with Image and Marvel goes and DC even goes. I just was never big on DC as a kid. Prime was probably, you know, the biggest character that Malibu put out. Um, sort of a Shazam type of a thing, maybe. Mantra, also, uh, you know, sexy chick, so she got over a little bit. Don't even know Freaks, don't even know The Strangers. I do remember Exiles. Uh, I do remember Hard Case, but it doesn't do anything for me. Unfortunately, the, the Ultraverse didn't do a lot for me. Um, there's Prime again fighting a dinosaur. Don't ask me, I don't know. Robocop versus the Terminator. Um, I, this might be like the first comic book crossover of two movie IPs, you know? I'm going to talk in the future about Batman vs. Predator, but I do recall Robocop vs. Terminator being around before that, thanks to Dark Horse Comics, right here in the great Pacific Northwest. Yes, super advantage, baby! It's not whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game is a bunch of garbage. That's why we've got two ways to keep you winning, the super advantage and the Aussie pad. Both for the Super NES. They got the kind of enhancements you need for today's fiercest games. Features like Turbo Fire, up to 32 shots per second, hands-free auto turbo, and slow motion control. With all these killer features and cool styling, it's no wonder they're the number one enhanced controllers for the Super NES. And I don't know what all the switches did. I didn't have this, but this was like serious nerding stuff when I was a kid. Like if you had this, that meant you were a real gamer. Before the term gamer existed, kids who had this were a gamer, for sure. If you had the game glove, you were a gamer. And isn't that kind of interesting that like, these guys are all trying to, st see, he's trying to steal my gimmick, you know. Got my boy Solitaire here, stealing my gimmick. But anyways, this comic book actually did move the needle for me. It did quite a bit. I'm gonna go pick up issue two if I can find it. That's gonna be kind of hard. Um, you know, I have this, this theory that someday these comic books that, that were not popular are gonna be expensive because not a lot of people collected them. It's kind of like a, a Mickey Mantle rookie card. Uh, whereas Mickey Mantle is one of the greatest baseball players of all time, don't get me wrong, his card should be valuable. He did a lot in his career, but the reason his card is valuable is because even though there were thousands of those cards printed, only a few kids were smart enough to hold on to that card. You know, you gotta hold on to that card. Keep it, you know, some kids, they put it in the spokes of their bike so it make that clack sound when they, when they rode their bike and it destroyed the Mickey Mantle rookie card. Or their mom came across and they're like, well, my kid doesn't need that anymore. He's, 20 year old man now. This is just something that, you know, was laying around in the house. So, but, but these type of comics, you know, they could become popular because there were, number one, there were so few of them printed, you know, not necessarily solitaire number one. And I mean, you know, I screwed up because I opened the poly bag, but that was more important to me to open this bag and find out what was inside to share it with you guys than to actually, you know, preserve this forever. Like I'm still part of the speculative market in the early nineties. But my theory is that because the print run on comics that weren't necessarily good, uh, or let me rephrase, comics that weren't necessarily entertaining, the print run is so low that there's already so few of them in existence. And then you have to factor in how many people actually saved them. So my theory is, is that maybe 
we should all really be preserving and archiving very carefully anything made by Meg's Visaggio because it might be worth money someday because everyone else is throwing them away. So if there's only one left in existence, you end up having something that's actually worth money simply because of the fact it's the only one of its kind. But anyways, I digress. Solitaire, my boy in purple, he does move the needle. The Ultraverse in this comic does move the needle. Uh, the fact that it actually felt like I was in California, the fact that, you know, honestly, this feels like the LA we've all come to know in the Me Too movement, doesn't it? I don't want you to, don't, don't blame Arrow the Acrobat for the Me Too movement. Ignore this. Let's talk about Harvey Weinstein for a second. This is what's going on in Hollywood. And, and this is from, you know, what, when was this from? 90, 93, November 93, 25 years ago. This is the way people on the inside knew it was. And it's still this way. Um, and it is, it is maybe changing. We don't really know for sure because it's all smoke and mirrors down there. But I find this to be uh, surprisingly contemporary. It has held up extremely well. Uh, perhaps more relevant today than it was in 1993. Uh, this is kind of also has kind of a, a not the not the angle, but the red curtains. The, the whole thing has a real Kubrick eyes wide shut sort of a vibe, doesn't it? Uh, granted, Kubrick would have never put it in an angle. He liked everything straight on, uh, very balanced, very symmetrical, typically. Uh, but that is definitely what the setting reminds me of is, you know, like, is Tom Cruise about to sneak in here wearing some creepy mask and watch, like, them do it in, the, like, an orgy? I don't know. But it's good. It's good. Solitaire has moved the needle for me here in the year 2018. I don't think it moved the needle nearly as much as they were hoping the Ultraverse would. Uh, honestly, I don't know if Malibu Comics still exists. Uh, I hope they do. Uh, their characters were better than Valiant's. If, Mal if Malibu and Valiant teamed up and they threw away all their crappy characters and they just kept, you know, like Prime and Mantra, this Freaks kind of looks interesting. None of these look very good to me. This kind of looks good. Uh, I'm uh, slightly interested in this because of the film that you see here. This is, this is celluloid that she's being reflected in. So I'm kind of curious if this also takes place in California. Uh, Prime didn't really do much for me. Don't judge, and, and honestly, don't judge Prime by this tiny little cover here with the bubbling. That's not what you normally see on Prime. Um, but this is kind of sucking me in here a little bit and making me wonder more about Mantra. So anyways, that's a little taste of the Ultraverse. That's what happens when you open up a poly bag that hasn't been opened in 25 years. You get a great comic book. You get a playing card. Apparently collect all four. The Ace of Spades is the one that is the rare card to find. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little look at the Ultraverse from Malibu Comics. And I, I hope you'll tell me if you collected Malibu Comics in the, in the comment section below. Let me know who your favorite Malibu character was. Let me know if this video intrigued you to pick up this, uh, this solitaire character, sort of a California's version of the Punisher, which could be really relevant today. I could write a really good story uh, about solitaire in contemporary Hollywood because this felt like contemporary Hollywood. So that's enough. I'll shut my mouth now. Please give a please give a thumbs up to this video. Please subscribe. Hit the ding dong for notifications. Don't forget to leave me those comments about your favorite Malibu Comics character. And I look forward to another totally awesome comic book review right here on what? Testosterone overload!